What's up Blasters? In today's video we're diving deep into the Belgian beer culture. Um, full disclosure, I myself am not a beer fan at all, so I had to bring in an expert, namely Jarik from the Beer Engineers, who's a zitologist. That's a fancy way of saying a beer expert, who will tell us all about these beers. And joining him will be my good buddy Munlau, who just likes drinking beer. So who else would be better suited to do so? Um, Together we'll be trying, tasting and rating 25 legendary Belgian beers. Of course, to stay true to Belgian beer culture, we've got the proper glasses for every beer, because yeah, that really does matter. Um, we recorded the video originally uh, at over three hours of length, so we trimmed it down for you to the absolute basics in this video. However, if you see any beers that interest you more, you can click the video link in the description below and you'll get the full explanation where we spend around 8 minutes talking about each and every single beer. Uh, so make sure to check that out if anything tickles your fancy. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Hey Dusters, my name is Munla and today I will be tasting all the different beers that will be pro provided to me. Oh, poor you. Oh. Oh, without further ado, let's start with the first beer. Uh, we start off great. <laughs> we start with a Belgian pride. Yes. Huh? Um, this is a Jupiler. I think this is probably the, the most well-known beer uh, from Belgium in the world. It's an easy drinker. You can find it everywhere. It's cheap uh, and it goes down smoothly. It almost doesn't feel like you're drinking beer because it's quite low in alcohol and it's always served really fresh. So um, it's 5.2% 5 5 only. The glass, uh, we always have the nice glasses for every beer today um, from the beer brand itself. Apparently when you pour this beer, uh, you have to pour it until the, the, the balls of the, the bull. Okay. Uh, apparently if the foam then reaches the top, so from the balls of the bull until the top, it's a perfect pour. Uh, let's, let's pour this first one. So. Um, Oh, look at that foam. Will I be able to pour the perfect beer? I don't know. I think it is. Uh, yeah. Oh. Perfect pour. Uh, nice. I will try the, yeah, the very first one. Cheers to you. So you yeah. just had your first beer. Okay. What were your impressions? For me, it's quite smooth, but maybe it's because I'm just yeah used to, to the taste. But for me, it's quite like very simple. Like you said, there's not much taste. But if um, if on, on certain days I want to have something with more flavor, more depth, then I will probably don't go with the jupe. I will take something something else. So it's like a little bit bitter. Yeah. But, uh, but very light. Yeah. That you get from the hops, by the way. Okay. Yes. And then it uh, stays a bit on your uh, on your palate, but it goes away quite quickly. So it's not, it doesn't really stay that long in, in your mouth. Yes. I would say exactly. There are not that many uh, different flavor compounds that can attach to your tongue and your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's like it's smooth. It goes in yeah. really well. Um, but it has a little bit of. Hint of sweetness. Well balanced, I would well, say. Well balanced, yeah. but nothing special. Yeah. So where would you rate this? Ooh, like I, I told you, it's my first beer. I, I want to put it on S, but then probably <laughs> there will be a lot of comments. Um, but I would say for now, I will put it, I probably will readjust maybe at the end, uh, but I would give it a B tier for now. Right in the middle, it's a, uh, Easy entry level beer for young people. Okay. okay, I will put it here in the middle. Let's beat here. Good old Chipilair with the bull. Okay. Good. Okay. Time for number two. Saison du Pont. One of my personal favorites, to be honest. For me, it will be the first time, so I've never tried this uh, beer. It's not that that typical anymore. Yeah. Um, it used to be a very typical beer to be drank during summer. Um, hence the name, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Saison is a typical workers' uh, beer. Um, with that, I mean that the people that were working on the fields back in the days, mm -hmm. they would drink this kind of beers to quench their thirst. Okay. So it's it's kind of similar than the Jupiler, 
Okay. Yeah. Except for the part that this one is not bottom fermented, but this is top fermented. Okay. So that means it gets quite a lot more flavor in there. You will have like notes of flowers, of uh, things that you didn't find at all in the previous beer. Mm -hmm. um, but it has the same kind of alcohol. Okay. Yeah. So also low alcohol, but much broader in the spectrum of aroma. So I really want you uh, to tell me what okay. you think of I'm this curious. beer. And if you say it's bad, I will kill you. <laughs> Then I like the color here because it's uh, intenser, it's darker, and it gives me like this um, peach, peach orange, yeah. darker color, and that, that's what's uh, the first look, and the foam looks. That is nice better. foam, man. Eh? Yeah, yeah. That's what so, they call a nice head. I will not wait. <sighs> Cheers. I must say the the taste is is very nice yeah. uh, for me for the first time, and like you said. Like um, the first time when I, I tasted it, it has uh, more flavors for sure. And um, like the flowery, but also like a bit of citrus. Yes. Uh, that I, I, yes. I noticed. Cool. And uh, yeah, that's quite nice. I, compared to the, the ship in there, this is like uh, yeah, quite surprising, I would say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, in terms of rating, Yes. Yeah, it's for me better than uh, Schüppler, uh, but I don't know if it's S tier yet because I, I still need to discover uh, the other ones. So for now, I'll put it on A tier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, time for the next beer. Another classic. Nice. Who are the? Yes. Um, this is a typical Belgian wheat ale. It even says it here on the label. Mm. We call it also a Witteke, a Blanche. Yep. Um, something typical Belgian, or invented in Belgium. Um, okay. yeah. Actually, normally I would do it to the customer. Okay, but, but yeah. Um, now, the they're, they're, now they're the customer. True. You're just a drink. <laughs> <laughs> You're it's just uh, clearly hazy, but the haziness is not that beautiful compared to the previous one, compared to the saison. So, um, yeah, it has. Is a, it more white? Probably yes. <laughs> if you say yeah. Yeah. What's in the name? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's so, that's how it got its name. It's okay, name. let's taste it. The the smell is less um, is less compared to the the saison, mm -hmm. um, and it's for me very sour. Like a more sour aftertaste, mm -hmm. uh, if I compare it to the previous uh, ones. Uh. Yeah. Um, and it's not really my favorite, I knew, knew that already. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, for me, it, it's just sour and it doesn't have much more depth or yeah, other special characters yeah. for me, the beer. But where would you rate this? I will not put it as D because, yeah, I know there will maybe will be even worse ones. Uh, but for sure, uh, it, it's not for me like on the level of saison or uh, Jupiler. So for now, I'll put it on on C. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for more? Yeah. Can Another I... classic one. I Another yeah. classic one, indeed. The Palom, the horse beer. Yes, you've seen this before, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very popular, or used to be very popular in Belgium in the pubs. Uh, but let's first drink this one, uh, an old school beer. Um, this is called a Special Belge, by the way. Okay. And the amber color comes from then? Um, but I think, I'm not completely sure about this, but I think because back in the days, um, people, uh, they thought that darker beers were stronger beers. beers. Ah, okay, so yeah. when you then serve someone an amber beer, it's like, oh, this is going to be a strong beer. Like for, for people that work with horses. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It smells quite 
strange actually. Uh -huh. I can't really describe, but it's something yeah different. It should be more like caramel and honey. It's a it's surprisingly um, light actually for the color. Yeah, especially now uh, for the color, for sure, yeah. for sure. Uh, but from a taste point of view, uh, I would say again not that special. I would say or not maybe quite to my tasting. Um, but also a little bit sour uh, and a little bit sweet, but not too okay. strong. I, uh, normally, with a palm, and when I taste the palm, I think of bread. Oh, yes. And yeah, you... I, I eat a lot of rice. I don't eat bread. So ah, maybe. Okay. I... okay. So where would you rate this? Oh, this one. For now, I will put it. I love the card. Yeah. <laughs> will uh, we taste this one? I'm looking forward to it. No. Uh, I hope not. Uh, for now, I'll put it on C. Yeah. Time for the next one. Oh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, no, Duvel. Oh, what's in a name? Well, it is one devilish beer. It is 8.5%. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite quite heavy um, but at the same time it has like a really good bitterness and also it has a very special yeast strain and actually the brewer went and got himself in Scotland mm -hmm. normally you have to pour this on a 45 degree angle they even have contraptions now in certain bars and then if you pour it like at 45 percent then mm -hmm. it should be somewhere around this actually uh, will not wait. Yeah. So what um, is what? Uh, yeah. What, what do you think about this? This looks amazing, right? Only the glass itself already makes it cool, and then it's uh, yeah, it's a beautiful color. Like it's also golden, but a bit deeper, mm -hmm. and then the foam yeah makes it complete. Like awesome, right? So also, um, and if if normally you look inside of the beer, these kind of glasses there. A work of art. The, if you look inside of the glass, there's actually a D engraved in there, um, which creates this really nice whirlwind effect if you look into yeah. it. The yeah, it's yeah, it's like, like I said, it's a staple. Yeah. Like the um, even though like the smell is is quite uh, subtle, but then when you drink it, it's like. Um, a good balance between bitterness but then also like a bit sourness like when you s first drink it, it's a little bit sour and then a little bit of the bitterness comes afterwards but also very smooth and a very dangerous one because this one you can yeah you can drink it very fast and, um, okay but i yeah i will not waste too much time for me that's a mess time for something special yeah Ooh -hoo. Look at this big boy. It looks more like champagne than uh, beer. Ooh. This, this uh, I like the reference because uh, for me, this as well is the champagne of Belgium. Okay. Yes. So um, what, what style, what are we drinking? Well, um, as I mentioned, it's something special. It's, yeah. This is called a lambic beer. Okay. A lambic beer is something that we haven't had before in terms of the fermentation. Yeah. So we've talked about top fermentation, we talked about bottom fermentation. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a third style. Actually, there are four styles, but the fourth style is actually a mix of two other styles. But this is the third official style. This is spontaneous fermented beer. The wild nature, the nature mm -hmm. in actually the area around Brussels called the Zennevalle, the Pajottoland, okay. is actually the reason why it gets inoculated with these special types of yeast from the air mm -hmm. during the night when the beer is cooling which mm -hmm. create this type of fermentation and flavor okay. for a non-beer drinker this is the kind of beer that they probably will also like okay. because it's so atypical to normal beer yeah it's uh, i will already um give you up on a bit of the secrets it's a bit sour okay. it's gonna be a bit sour
like apples, uh, apple, green apple sour. Like green apple sour, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That is a perfect yeah. texture. And this one is um, a special type of this lambic. It's infused uh, with these two herbs. So, um, cilantro. cilantro and uh, oranges. That's a tea tier. Yes, and I also. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like cilantro? No, not that much. It tastes much. like, fl like uh, soap for you? Yeah. Typical champagnoise yeah. style. It's almost always in these big bottles um, with a capsule um, and a cork. Um, uh, lambic normally is not carbonated. Um, Whoa. That's a special one. <laughs> it's sour, but not too sour. So that, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I taste the cilantro, but... <laughs> Do you smell it, it, it maybe? It's peeping at, uh, staying at the... I smell, I smell something strange, I think it's a cilantro. Uh, it's actually not that, that bad. Mm -hmm. But for me, when I go for a beer, like if it's a bit too sour, yeah, for me, it doesn't feel like a beer. But yeah, it, it is a specialty kind of beer. Not everyone will like this, but... Uh, please give it a try. Um, it's it's something typically from Belgium, from the Brussels area, and it can keep up for f up to fifty years. So if you buy a bottle now, and you keep it for fifty years, you probably made three hundred percent revenue on it mm. just by keeping it in your cellar. Okay. Yeah, because well, when I keep it, we'll keep it CD <laughs> because <laughs> of the financial. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. So um, what is an autogasm? I already mentioned that it's a blend of lambics. Mm -hmm. um, back in the uh, normally, it is a blend of one, two, and three year old okay. um, lambic. The the quantity, so the percentages are for each beer or each blend different. Mm -hmm. The brewery chooses itself what the best blend is. Sometimes they will even use four year old uh, lambic okay. um, because the longer that you keep it on those wooden oak vessels the more sour it gets, but also the more flavor it gets from the wood or the drinks, the spirits yeah. perhaps, that have been on those oak vessels before. Yeah. It's Does it mean that each year, if they come out with uh, Audigeuse, that the taste can be different? Because It is always them, different. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That is the cool thing about these kind of artisanal style beers. Yeah. They are unique. Okay. Every batch is different. Yeah. So normally we would have had the difference uh, from an, a still beer compared to a sparkling mm -hmm. beer, but and now they're both sparkling. Okay. For me, the first thing I notice is the the foam is different, mm -hmm. and also the color is lighter a little bit. It's oh, this one is better for <laughs> me personally. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the the sourness is less sharp. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you have a little bit of the oranges and um, yeah, it's also very smooth this one. So, you know, I yeah. think it might also be the reason. Okay, for 2021, 2022. Exactly. This has been aged already okay. for, for some, some time. So, um, yeah, I, I mentioned to you, you can keep Lambic almost like forever and it becomes more juicy yeah. and less in your face. face. Yeah, it's less sharp. Yeah. Uh, so it goes in smoother. So so that's what I like. So yeah, it's much better. I ah, much better. It's better than the, the the previous one. But yeah, it's maybe not fair because of the aging. So I think for me, I prefer it for sure above the Palm de Wugarde. But it's not the saison, so I'll put it on me for now. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, people don't often think of this as, as, as beer because they don't know it. It's yeah. so atypical from all of the other styles. Um, but exactly because of that, I, I um, said it was like the champagne of Belgium. Yeah. In the Michelin star restaurants in Belgium, for example, they will often put a beer like this as their aperitif. Ah, okay. Yeah. As a champagne. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Because it has so much okay. acidity, just like a champagne, to open up the palate. It's, it's a really, really nice palate cleanser. Um, and it's also like so versatile for mm -hmm. a lot of dishes like with white fish. Uh, but let's now go for another style of lambic beer I see, but this time with fruit in it. Yeah. Ah. My all-time favorite. Ooh. Is that? that? This is like 
when you're young and you're afraid to order a beer <laughs> because you probably will not like it because of the bitterness, then you start with yeah, something that has a lot of fruit in it and is a bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. Um, first of all, the gloss is quite pretty. I like this gloss. Mm -hmm. um, and also the color, I, it has been a while since I have drank uh, Krieg. It's um, not that clear. I thought it was clearer mm -hmm. uh, or that that was in my mind. So I'm a bit surprised that it's like not that clear, but very beautiful, the, the color. Yeah. And apparently, uh Krieke ah, also okay. bought like an OG glass. Ah, that's an old school one. Yeah I, yeah, I can remember them. Yeah, the the smell is very, yeah, the cherries. Uh, there is something really... that I mentioned to you before about the color of the foam. And you, you can instantly see that this is not pearly white. Mm -hmm. So something has been added. Very sweet. Very nice. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a beer. It's like it's a candy. Uh, yeah, like the the cherry candies. Ooh. I want <laughs> to put it at S, but I don't think you will. Oh really my there. god! <laughs> well, you do you. Yeah. You do you. But for me, mostly because it's like nostalgia. Nostalgia. You're like, okay, I don't like beer when you when I'm I was young. It's like, okay, I will start with the, a creek. And then when you drank, it's like, yeah, I drank my first beer. And then, okay, <laughs> after a while, it's like, okay, it's just yeah, like cherry juice. And then you move forward to the, the real beer. But for me, it's after like, you yeah, were it already some... an alcoholic with cherry juice. Yeah. <laughs> so I will put it for S for now. Oh, yeah. ho, ho. okay. We're in for a treat. Ah, oh, nice glass. Na yeah, uh, nice match, you know? Okay, yeah. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Wow, perfect. Look. Sponsor mm. of the day. It's, uh, it's, it's called Orval, but it's, mm. it also says it on the bottle. It's a Trappist ale. Okay, yeah. Yes, so this is the very first of a couple of Trappists that we'll be having today, apparently. And Trappist beers are actually beers brewed not only in Belgium anymore. Uh, there are six Trappist beers in Belgium. There are a couple uh, outside of Belgium as well. I think in total we're now at 10. Uh, and they have to be brewed within the walls of a Trappist monastery. So not just okay. any monastery, not just any monks. It needs to be brewed by the order of the Trappist monks. Um, and also this beer, um, when it's young, is quite hoppy, quite intense. Mm -hmm. um, which is why I mentioned when I was in Ghent, for me it was a very crazy beer because I never had this style of beer before. Um, but once you love this kind of beer, once you love that taste, yeah, you're, you're sold forever. Okay. And after a while, after a couple of years, this beer really mellows. Like okay. the Lambics, it becomes softer. Yeah. It's like in between golden yellow and amber. I think it looks it, it looks really appetizing. Yeah. It's surprisingly uh, smooth and for a trappist, not too strong. Right on yeah. on the nose. Um, often people they think that trappists are heavy beers. Yeah. This is only six percent. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's actually quite light and refreshing, but it has so much body that it it doesn't feel like it's only six percent. What I do. Uh, notice is now I've drank it and it's uh, it stays uh, in your mouth the, the taste yeah uh, and that's uh, if I talk about like wine also has the same the longer it tastes in your mouth I uh, the yeah the better um, and it has that same effect so uh, that's what I really like about this one and it's also very smooth so I think this one is a quite dangerous one uh, I would say mm -hmm. well Ah, uh, surprisingly, I would... That's difficult. Mm. Now, we'll put it at 8 here. Oh, uh, that's, that's not how we're going to get sponsorship. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the next Trappist. Trappist West Muller. 
so an oldie, goldie. Mm. What is so special about this? It's a double beer. Huh? So I, I mentioned that uh, the, the previous brewery, Orval, only has one beer. Yeah. Well, Westmala has many. Um, yeah. So they have the double and the triple, which makes, of course, a brother selection. Um, mm -hmm. So what is a double beer? Uh, double actually means that the, the malts that you have, huh? so beer consists of four ingredients, yeah. malts, important factor. Well, the more malts that you add, the more alcoholic it's going to get. I'm, I already mentioned that. But also, you can add different kinds of malts to create the color of your beer. Okay. Uh, if you want to create dark beer, you need to, create, you need to have dark malts. Yep. That's how you create color. Or you use colorants, mm -hmm. but fuck colorants. <laughs> Uh, so, with the double and the triple and the quadruple, they mean that they use um, one or two or three or four times the amount of malts. <laughs> amounts, yeah. not types. So yeah, let's drink it. Ah, you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of beer normally doesn't have that much CO2 going on. They are stronger in alcohol, this one? It's stronger than a normal blonde yeah. or, um, or a normal brown, so this will be 7%. Okay. Um, which, back in the days, was actually already quite a lot. Mm. Uh, typical beers were a lot less alcoholic than they are now. Yeah. It's giving me um, a bit coffee vibes. Coffee or Coca-Cola? Yeah. Right? Yes. So... Yeah, I don't often drink dark, uh, Trappist. Um, but they are a bit stronger in taste, uh, I think personally. And also in this one, it goes smooth in the beginning and then there's like a certain punch suddenly of, of yeah, bitterness. Uh, and it's quite uh, strong, the, the, the punch. Yeah, that's from uh, the hops. Yeah. Yes. And then, um, but actually it's, it's quite surprising. For me it's also, I think, the first time that I tried Westmala. Uh, I expected it to be even more uh, punchier. Uh, but actually when you drink it, it's quite, it's quite smooth. It's just at the end, like the, the hops when they, mm -hmm. they kick in, that you, that you do taste it. Uh, but in general, not, not a bad one. I would say, yeah. Uh, I'll put that for now on B because it's for me, no. yeah, just a very standard and I think entry level for, for dark trappist. I okay. Agree. Yeah. Good. Great in stews, by the way. Okay, let's try that. Yeah. But the next okay. one, <laughs> even <clears throat> better. This in stew or without stew, mm -hmm. just in the winter. Ah. Uh, this is one of my favorites. A really good winter warmer. Chimé okay. Bleu. The blue Chimé. Okay. Yeah. This brewery, they also have, it's also a Trappist beer. They also have multiple beers. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they have the red one, they have the green one, um, based on their caps. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you translate it into French and then you say, you say Chimé Bleu. Okay. Yeah. And this, is, uh, yeah. this is a style of um, quadruple. Quadruple this one. Yes. Okay. okay. So see, it's nine nine percent. Yes, one. this is a heavy one. Okay. Now we're getting into this is the real stuff. Okay. Yeah, this is the major league. So now we're getting we're getting okay. there nine percent and above. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let me open up the beer. Ah, oh, that is. Once again, that Coca-Cola coffee color. Yeah. There we go. Even more beautiful. I don't know. It's uh, intenser. Well, for sure, the color is the more, for me the most beautiful one so far. It's really dark uh, black. And but it's uh, not black yet. You will see. Yeah, in a little period, bit. It's it has true. like a red hue as well. Yeah, shine maybe. Yeah. So. It 
It has a specific taste, He's uh, but I'm trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, well balanced and yeah. not too strong. If, if you look at it, it's, it looks like it's something very strong and overtaking. But actually when you're drinking, it's, um, it has a little bit of that strongness, but it's well balanced still. I that's think quite so, I, uh, what I like about it. Yeah. No, but it's a very nice one. Uh, yeah, this one is a difficult one. It's A or S? I'll put it at A for now. Yeah. Mm. Oh, look at this banger. I love this beer. I really, really love this beer. Uh, this brewery, actually. So, next Trappist beer. Uh, once again, we have a quadruple over here. So, this is number eight of the Trappist uh, Rush 4. Okay. Yes. So, they have the six, the eight, and the twelve. And both the eight, uh, six, the eight, and the ten, sorry. And both the eight and the ten, they're actually yeah. quadruples. So, they're yeah, both okay. darker ales. Um, just like you had before with the Shimme. Yeah. The only difference is the alcohol percentage, more or less. So a bit more malts for the 10, a bit less malts for the 8. So the yeah. 8 over here you see has 9.2%. Yeah. The 10 uh, actually has 11.2%. Uh, but also look at that glass. Uh, yeah. That is what I call a proper chalice, right? It really replicates like the, the old chalices. Yes. The, the color is already lighter than uh, the Shimano. But I, I do really like the, um, the sweetness in it. Um, yeah, so this one is uh, very surprisingly nice and smooth. It's, uh, it's yeah. dangerous even. Yeah. If, you, yeah, if you think about it, 9%. It's heavier than a Shimano. Eh? Yeah. But it doesn't taste as heavy as a I think so yeah. too. Even lighter than the Shimea. Yeah. It, it really fits my, my palate. So that uh, mm. typically what I like in a beer, it really hits that spot. Uh, for now, I'll put it on S tier. For me. Yeah. <laughs> These next two, they're probably like the most iconic Trappist beers you can find all around the world, even though one of them mm. isn't actually a Trappist. Ah, okay. Yes. Can you tell me which one isn't the Trappist? I'm going to say the blue one. Because uh -huh. the blue one looks a bit like modern. <laughs> so true, so true. Yeah, so what do we have in front of us? It's called the Simbernardus Apt 12, and here we have the West Flatteran 12. Both indeed clocking in at 10%. Mm -hmm. Both looking quite similar when we will pour them. Both quite the same in recipe as well. Okay. Yes. Awesome. There is a story behind this. Ah, good to know. Yeah. yeah. They are not the same beer. Ah, that okay, that yeah. is something that I want to get out of the world. It's not the same beer. But West Lettern 12 did get brewed at this brewery at a certain moment in time during the war not a trappist yeah. trappist this by the way was the best beer in the world for 10 years up very foamy the smell is uh yeah, super intense because I can already directly smell it. The smell already is. This one because it's already aged a bit. You can see. Like I'm not gonna pour a bit. You have the yeast depot and also the foam. It dissipates. Yeah. Very okay. quick. Very quickly. To me, visually, that looks more appealing now. Yeah, because of the foam. It, it, it makes a big difference, yeah. right? I expected actually more <laughs> based on the story, I uh -huh. was told. Um, not yeah. that it's bad. Um, it's, it's still like well balanced and smooth, but I thought um, that there would be something unique pop mm -hmm. up. 
and maybe I'm, I'm missing that a little bit. S smells really nice already. Mm -hmm. Well, after four years, this one is now brilliant. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? You wouldn't say that they, uh, if, if you listen to history, that they have kind of the same recipe or they start from the same recipe because they're completely different. But this one is, yeah, this one is really unique. I, mm -hmm. I've never tasted a, a trappist um, that unique. The smell alone, but then also the, yeah, it's very unique. It's very difficult to describe, but another sip. He was mm. only going to drink one sip of each beer from now on, but... This really <sighs> reminds me of coffee. It Some definitely, it has like the mocha, yeah. the, like the, the creamy mocha, not, not like the harsh bitter coffee. No, no, no but the, um, yeah, is it the smell, like when you drink coffee and you smell it, it, it has something similar to that. For sure. So, wow. Yes. Okay. Now that is amazing, right? Yeah, that one is really amazing. Okay. Yeah. So if, if everyone uh, has a chance to try this one, I would say uh, definitely try it because it's yeah something that you will probably... I have not tried all the rest, but some of them I've already tried. You will not find that back in, in another uh, beer as long as I have drank beer, of course. So, yeah. yeah, I think so too. And this uh, is a cool experiment, right? Yeah. yeah, for sure that you can compare them and yeah, they have the same uh, with, with the story behind it. Yeah. And St. Bernardus, for me, that's more like a, a beat here because I don't find it that special. But it's still well balanced. Yeah, this one that, that's got tier. Do we have the G above S tier, like got tier? <laughs> no, no, Put okay. it to the left of the dude. Here, like here. Hopla. <laughs> we have this one. I think that one will be a winner. If, yeah. Well, um, there are still a couple more to go. Yeah. So I'm now surprised. Well, very well. Yeah. I was not surprised at all, but I was surprised by your face. It was oh, pure, pure enjoyment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, fuck yeah. Now we're going from God tier level to basic again. Ah, okay. And it's yeah. also cool to have this after the Trappists because Afflingham, yeah. often people think it's a Trappist. Mm -hmm. It's not a Trappist. Okay, it, it, yeah. it, it is um, a monastery, yeah. but it's not a monastery of Trappists. So. Okay. It's not a Trappist. Okay. Yes. Um, but it is an Abbey beer. Okay, yeah. And we have those a lot in Belgium as well. And they are often also really good. Because mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, the monks, they know what they were doing. They've been making beer for a long time. When you want quality, go for Abbey beers, yeah. go for Trappist beers. They're almost, you cannot go wrong with them. Okay. So, typical, normal, Belgian, blonde Abbey beer. Ooh. In a cool glass. Yeah. And you can guess from where it is. Afriya. Yes! Oh, okay. Woohoo! We have a winner. 10 points. 10 points. <laughs> Two points. <laughs> the, the color already is quite nice. Yes. It's um, back to that golden, but a bit darker. This is what darker we really golden. say is a golden yellow yeah. color. Textbook. Mm. Yeah. And then also the foam is quite uh, dense, but also nice. And this is um, a bigger brewery, com more commercial brewery. The beer that they create is the same every time. Yeah, yeah. It's not really fair because yeah, I've, I've went to a really strong taste too. But indeed, uh, it's, it's well balanced, very light. Um, and indeed not too strong, so the bitterness is, is not really... Coming, uh, coming up too much. A little bit of sourness, but not too much. Uh, so yeah, a, a great one. But yeah, again, yeah, compared to the, the previous ones, it's for me, yeah, now lacking a bit of that surprise factor, but a very, uh, very good one. If, yeah, let's say a palate cleanser. Mm -hmm. um, as for me, it's yeah, in the middle. I will also put it here in the middle. For me, that's a B tier. So I've put it there. Yeah. 
people <clears throat> people would on the internet now are screaming like Saint <laughs> Bernard is up twelve, <laughs> same as this. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's that's, that's got tier. Huh? For me as well, to be honest, um, it's a here. very very commercial beer. Um, ba -ba 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 Triple Carmelite. You can find this all around the world lately. Uh, ever since the brewery was bought up by uh, Abbe Imbiff, they mm. of course exploded, um, and now have export all around the world. But that doesn't change the fact that it's just an amazing beer. This is just like a very good staple of a triple beer, yeah. but made with multiple grains, with yes. four grains. So you get a very big complexity on the malt bill. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah. That's a big glass. Yeah. I also like the glass. Normally, I would never give a triple in like this really ah. big glass. There are a couple of brands that are now doing it, like Cornet and, uh, and Triple yeah. Carmelite. But the reason why I would not put it in such a big glass is because the bigger the glass, the more contact surface, the more easily it becomes warm, warm. and then it becomes less. This less. warm is not drinkable. Uh, it's my go-to actually, uh, Triple Carmelite. No. <laughs> yeah, it's just perfect. Uh, this is like, yeah. Yeah, if you're like searching for the perfect woman, perfect wife is like, yeah. It's, it's like <laughs> oh, wow. but, yeah. but it, it is different than the previous one in multiple aspects. You see, it's, it's hazy, for example. It's not clear at all. The, the foam is, is perfect uh, and it stays forever. Yeah. Golden color again. Uh, for me, it looks yeah. appealing, this beer, all the time. For me, it's just like like the things that I like, like the sourness, sometimes the sweetness, the bitterness, this is for me like the, the perfect balance uh, for my palate. Mm -hmm. it, it, it hits all the spots and yeah, just in, in a summer outside and then you get a very uh, a cold Carmelite, it's like, yeah, the best night of, of your life. I get so, you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's got here. <laughs> that. I'm grading my own tier. <laughs> uh, the first thing we have to do is downgrade everything. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, no. goes to uh, garbage. <laughs> no. Oh, stop drinking. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> I know, right? This one and <laughs> uh, if uh, that, that's got here <laughs> also. That I mean, yeah, how the car uh, Yeah, yeah. We're we're getting there to the triple. No, I, <laughs> okay, but I'll, I will taste uh, for this. Yeah. Oh, I love glasses with the, the, the golden, golden rings. Yeah. I, uh, my um, Rush for glass actually also had that, but I put it in a dishwasher. <laughs> Don't do that, people. Um, so it lost it, but uh, nice. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah, again, the, for me, like, just beautiful like with the foam and then the the color mm -hmm. again also a bit like that honey uh, uh, and this one is also typical coriander uh, star anise and uh, orange peel all yeah. the way this is as typical belgian triple as right. you can get this is what belgium is really famous yeah. for right? belgian triples i will love it <laughs> It's, it's different than the Carmelite, but at, then again, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you can also find them all around the world, so buy yourself some. For me, that's S tier. I got tier, actually. Is it worse than the Dougal? Worse than the Dougal? It's better than the Dougal. So actually, you should... But actually, it's got tier, but that's why I wanted to have got tier. Can we just move the order? Ah, okay, this way. I, like I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. my score for this will not be that high because <laughs> yeah I had a night where I only drink I drank this this kind of beer and it was a terrible night it's uh, his tequila yeah and since then I've never touched this uh, before but <laughs> it's a cool beer also um, because there is a cool story behind it um, okay. yeah so this is part of the Ashuf brewery the brewery itself actually um, 
recently was acquired by Duvel, Duvel Mordhead. Mm -hmm. But the brewer from Shuv used to also be the brewer of Duvel. Mm, okay. Yeah, so he created his own brewery. He was a bit mad in the head, so he created something with leprechauns. And if you go to the brewery, actually the, the brewery itself has like a very big hat of the, the, the leprechaun yeah, on, yeah. The, on the brewery itself. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> uh, he's not puking. Uh. Uh, but it's indeed sweeter uh, uh, than the duvel. And I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I can't remember. So for me, it's like uh, completely new. It's quite okay. Like the, the taste, it's sweet. It's well balanced. It goes, uh, it goes in uh, easily. Uh, but yeah, for me, it still brings up the memory. So yeah so it's you're okay. not doing yeah. two, oh. two, two gulps no no not for <laughs> this one i'll keep it there the leprechaun can stay there but where oh, would you rate it that's a difficult one the yeah, object, but the this objective. is my this is my <laughs> list huh? oh, that's so cool. here i'll put it here <laughs> no. the leprechaun can stay at the bottom but it's higher than lambic uh lower no. than lambic so lambic is not at the bottom anymore Ah, yeah. damn. Yes, after the leprechaun, <laughs> we get the elephant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another brewery with great marketing. I also love the fact that this uh, bottle, it looks a bit like stone. Uh, they also had glassware, which was in stone. And then uh, oh, okay. I, I really like that. But look at this glassware as well. Marketing is on point. Mm -hmm. You see anything strange about this? Uh, yeah, yeah. it looks like... It looks like the trunk yeah. of the elephant. So yeah, marketing boys. Yeah. But only yeah, the glass alone is already like cool. It's cool. Yeah. Huh? yeah. So yeah, let's, let's see what is inside. It's another blonde mm -hmm. beer. There you go. Very nice, um, yeah, golden color uh, on this one. But also like a lot of bubbles. But also coming, it's the same as uh, on a duel, coming from uh, from the trunk this yeah, time. Yeah, from the trunk. If you see bubbles know, coming from a trunk. trunk. <laughs> Yeah, how it will taste, but okay, yeah, I will not judge. All right. Ah, it's cool that they also have, for the people here, like uh, very small elephants yeah. uh, on the side. So you, really the elephant pattern is, is everywhere. Right, it's strange to hold. Uh, Santé. Santé is cool. Mm. Very nice smell. Mm-hmm. And also, what do you smell? Uh, it's very strong, the, the smell. It, I, it really is uh, strong, or I can smell it harder than the, the previous mm -hmm. ones. But what do I. What I would say is that because of the strong um, marketing and like the, the whole how the bottle looks mm -hmm. and, and the pink elephant, but then when you taste it, it's quite. Uh, soft, yes. right? So that's why it's it's so, yeah you don't expect that, um, but yeah it, it's a good for me a good blonde beer mm -hmm. uh, and also again yeah very very smooth and easy easy drinking this one, but uh, yeah different completely opposite than the yeah how it presents it itself. I'm not such a bad. <laughs> I'll put it at B. I almost wanted to put it on A just for the marketing and how the, the glass looks like, but purely on taste, I'll put it at, at mm -hmm. B. You have to rate the beer, not the marketing. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, we have an iconic beer in store for you now. Bolleke. Um, Bolleke, Koning. Yeah. So it will be amber. Uh, exactly. Amber color. You are a worthy student, mm -hmm. my Padawan. 
Yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, indeed, very similar to uh, to the palm. I'm wondering if the taste will be the same. Yeah. That, yeah, it, that, it's indeed similar to the palm. Yeah, the, but maybe a bit more caramelly. Yeah, the, and the um, irony is a bit less, but also still a bit present mm -hmm. on that. Um, caramelly, I do really like the color. Yeah, I like, like the that amber as well. color. No. But same to the, yeah, same to the palm bits, like a little bit sour, but not too much. Mm -hmm. um, I would say leathery, but... But it's not sour like a lamb eh? No, 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 it's co completely not and Just the for same. the viewers and yeah. then like... It's just a little bit sour after well, after taste yeah. when, when when you drink it. It's it's um, from the malt, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but actually, not not bad um, because it's also the first time that I uh, drink this bolica. But it's surpri yeah, surprisingly, and even if I had to choose, I choose this beef. Oof, I will maybe it's so cold. Yeah, I'll choose this above the palm, maybe even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. I must say, it's still not. Re I'm not really a fan. So, also now, if I would see it, I, I would probably n not really pick it. Um, so for me, it's it's a C tier, mm -hmm. but it's for me the higher than the who uh, are Yeah. Oh, yeah. Strafa Henry quadruple, amazing. Um, we don't have the right glass, but uh, our blaster master, he will uh, create it uh, with yeah. certain kind of tools afterwards. So This one is the heaviest so far. 11. It's yeah, 11. Okay, yeah. yeah, so that is Nekletz. Yes. Nekletz, it's almost at the end, so... They also have a really nice glass normally. <laughs> Very beautiful foam. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, again the co yeah, the color is like Coca-Cola coffee, more coffee. Um, this is already a bit more dark than the shimmer, yeah. right? Let's see through. Yes. Nice smell, but still not the same as the Westfletra. Uh, but it does have a, a unique smell to it. Then. It's a strange one, this one. This one is... Also, I find it sour, uh, yeah. not really like uh, green apple sour, just a little bit, but it's sour on a different level than all the other ones. Okay. So it's, um, again, like it's completely different than all the other ones. Mm -hmm. So on that, it's quite nice that it's like very unique and you don't taste that it's 11%. 11 yeah, I so, know. It's tricky. Yeah. And they, they used um i think additives like licorice um and sweet wood how do you call it in english is it the, the woods that you like yeah chew that on? you chew on and uh, for me it's for sure better than the uh, rochefort oh wow that's a very yeah high um, number yeah, but creek. below the creek oh <laughs> creek is creek so then you get this uh, icon of a beer here in Belgium called the Rodenberg. Um, I think the most famous red ale that you can find in the world. You find this mm -hmm. everywhere nowadays. Because uh, this one is actually like a sour beer. Oh, oh. Yes. 
but not sour sour. You, you can see the trend already. If it's too sour, it it really drops. Yes, <laughs> I know. Oh, that's that's a um, surprisingly uh, color. Yeah. Th that's why they call it also a, a Flemish red ale yeah. because it really looks yeah. red. Red. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm not going to pour you anymore because I fucked up a bit. <laughs> but uh, uh, the the color is nice. Like, I love um, it. It looks a bit like a creek, right? Yeah. Yeah. But a bit s more subtle, like softer, softer color. So it's. It, this is a surprise. Yeah, I know, right? Because it's it even tastes a bit like cherries, but there's no cherries in it. So nope. I'm so mind boggled. <laughs> like how even? Uh huh. That's why I love this but, brewery. Yeah, it's like indeed, if you find creek too fruity and too much on on, on cherry taste, and this is like the the perfect. Uh, I think one. so too. And for me, this is way more refreshing mm -hmm. because there is no sugar in it. You don't taste any sugar. Uh, there is sugar in it, but yeah. that, uh, but it's actually not that sour as I, as I, as I thought it would be. Then you? then you get normally a bit of the vanilla ish from the wood. I uh, a bit of the wood also. Yes. I, 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 I can uh -huh. if I breathe out. I, I can. Yeah, it feels like I'm licking the wood. Yeah, <laughs> kind yeah of. exactly. So, yeah. I think people like who like like whiskey, where you can also mm -hmm. really taste the barrels. You, if you like that, this one is also like similar. Yeah, but, but then not yeah as not strong, but exactly. But you get the same um, yeah experience also a bit of the barrels. So I want to put it up front uh, the creek, but uh, yeah, I didn't thought I would do that. So it goes a bit against my intuition. Okay, no, I'll put it because I like it more than the creek now. Because I'm, yeah, for me the creek now is a bit too sweet. Um, hmm. but I'll put it there. Yeah. He might be. He might redeem himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Also, the first time that I, I tried it at Rodenbach. So yeah, cool. surprise. Almost there. The most okay. interesting gloss. Yes, time for the beer with the most interesting <laughs> gloss. The quack gloss. It's a difficult gloss also to pour into it. You need to do it really slowly because also eh, you might yeah. already create a quack skin. Hmm. Okay. We don't want that. Okay, slowly now. Okay, perfect. I was maybe a bit too careful, but <laughs> doesn't matter. It's better like this than the other way around. Okay. So. Ah, you didn't drink enough mm. to create a quackske. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the reason why it's shaped like this also has a story. So this is actually um, supposed to be similar to the handlebar at the postal carriage. So oh, they used yeah. to, they used to, a uh, postal carriage, just a carriage yeah. with horses. Eh? The people that actually were on those carriages for mm -hmm. a long time, they wanted to drink something. How did they drink something? Well, they had to put their glasses or drink somewhere. Oh, so the, uh, the color itself, it, this reminds me of iced tea. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's like, yeah, amber, but then a bit lighter, but then also with the um, amount of bubbles. So it really reminds me, and then just the gloss itself is like, yeah, quite nice. Good marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. What a, go a gloss ca can't do. So I really like that. Um, so, but I would taste it again because I just wanted to experience the quack, but then I forgot the, the taste of the, the beer. <laughs> so yeah, now you have to try it again. Oh, no quack skin. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, um, like s sweet also. Yeah, but bit. not too sweet, right? No, not too sweet, yeah. but more on. Uh, if I compare it with other on on the sweeter side, you can say. So yes. if you look for something that is a bit of sweet, and I think Quack is the one to recommend. Yeah. 
Um, caramelly. Yeah, caramelly. Yes. I would say really fits. I uh, fits the color, right? The co like caramel color and a bit of caramel taste and then a bit of sweetness. So what you see is what you get. Yeah. No. Oh. Indeed. But then, yeah, most people just do it for the balls, I, I guess. So, yeah, and it, it, it's it's good that the beer doesn't suck. Yeah. Right. Uh, for me, quack. I'll put it at A, actually. I just like the, yeah, the, the gloss, really like, and also the taste is like, yeah, it goes smooth, it's sweet. So yeah, good. We are almost at the finish line. Of it, it. Yeah. So we're going. Another classic one. We're going back to our roots. Yeah. This brewery is uh, Duvel Mortiet once again. So so close to home. Um, and this is called a Belgian style IPA. Also a brewery that is really good with marketing. Yeah, they use like colorful colors, and you can see also on the on the ticket, yeah. on the label, more modern. Yeah, they're, they're a bit more modern and yeah. they think outside of the box. For example, with this Fadet, when it was for re first released. So they had a really big cement mixer truck um, that was actually with the logo of the Fadet. So that uh, okay. the, the camion, uh, the, the cement mixer itself looked like the bottle. I was genius. Eh? You see them on the road. These guys, mm. good at marketing as well. Okay. And making good beer. Yeah. But it's a bit darker, right? It is. It's like a uh, like orange tone to it, mm -hmm. uh, brownish. It's also oh. hazy. Yeah. Fruity. Mm -hmm. And there's a specific fruit that comes in mind, I, but I cannot pinpoint the name, but... Yeah. Pomplemousse. Wow, yeah, that's right on the spot. That's what, yeah, indeed. When you say it, it's like directly like pom pom mousse, yeah. Yeah, and that comes straight from the hops. Okay. Uh, yeah, Great fruit, fruit. Yeah. yeah. But that's so strange, like when you taste certain fruits or, or flowers, but then you know that it's not in it. Uh -huh. Then it's like, yeah, it's very mysterious that like, how, yeah, how come? That is the magic of yeah. beer. With four ingredients, you can create. Wow, it's 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 insane. So uh, for sure, one to recommend, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, I'll put it at eight here. Yeah, but uh, do I like? Ah, uh, no, 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 not compared to the other ones. No. Oh, we come to the, the very last one. The conclusion. Yeah. The Big Bang. The Black Albert. Albert. Oh my God, this beer brings back Not for memories. Uh, pre pregnant people. Uh, mm, I think so. no beer. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other ones didn't say that, so. <laughs> Here it's 13%. This is the strongest. This is the strongest beer that we'll be having today. Uh, I should prepare to be amazed. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's really dark. Also the foam, Eating yeah, you can foam. see the foam. Oh my god. Eight years already. This is dead. already eight years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is like dessert. The smell already. It's crazy. Say, yeah. It spreads through the room. Yeah. Within one second, you can already uh, smell it. Yeah. Just looking at it makes me thirsty. I must say, from a taste point of view, it's very strong. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can taste the alcohol as yeah. well. Eh? Yeah. So, yeah, for people that maybe are getting into it, this would be a bit too, maybe too strong for them, because for me, it's also like, right there mm -hmm. but then again like enjoyable and yeah also a unique like you have west flater unique but this is like 
like from a flavor point of view and the intensity and also the smell this is like even two times or three times as, as strong and oh. but this one is really indeed like you need really need to take your time to enjoy it and i think yeah yeah it's also made for that with with that intensity mm -hmm. yeah it's totally different the smell the taste the boldness um so i think we we did save like the most unique and special one until last for sure yeah but this is from a unique point of view and I'm saying that yeah okay if you want to try something heavenly and like never before this one is like okay yeah this is the a must one. try yeah a must try yeah. yeah so i've put it on s and i've Oof. Mm. it's difficult it's for sure right more than this but i don't know if i prefer it. yeah Because these these two are my like my go to. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll put it here for now. I'll put it here. Yeah. Please. I will reorganize a little bit. Huh? Um. So should that first? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me check. So all the beer is good. Um, yeah, actually, there's not a beer that I, s where I said, like, I really don't like the taste. And on that note, peace. <laughs> so there you have it, folks, the definitive Blastworks ranking list. If you're into this kind of content, be sure to check out the beer engineers on all socials. And also, let us know in the comments down below if you'd like us to make more beer-related content. For example, we could visit the Strauss Brouwers Brewery. Whoa, yes, that's a good idea. Let us know if it would interest you. Subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, likes. See you next time. Keep blasting down those beers. <laughs>